All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for spending your lunch hour with us. We will uh, try our best to make it worthwhile. Uh, we're gonna talk to you this afternoon about the custom platform. Custom platform uh, allows you, will allow you for the first time to create your own custom metadata types uh, in force.com. So uh, with us today, we have a distinguished guest speaker, Mac Anderson, who is the CTO of Fontiva. Uh, also speaking is Avram Roy Faderman, the creator and the lead developer of the custom platform. And my name is uh, Aaron, I am the uh, product manager. So we'll start off with the safe harbor. This is just to remind you to make any and all purchasing decisions based on what's currently available in the product and not uh, what is planned or may be forthcoming at some point in the future. So let's go back and look at where Salesforce has come from. Uh, we started out with a CRM app, um, a Salesforce automation application that uh, the, the key differentiator was that it was uh, based in the cloud, had subscription-based billing, and was consumed through a web browser um, by the customer. So at the time, there's a lot of white space around this, uh, and that was, that was uh, basically what we uh, started out with, and we shortly after that decided to fill in some of that white space by opening up the uh, platform underneath those CRM apps. So this then allowed us to uh, provide the platform for ISVs to build applications, and for enterprises to build applications that were tightly integrated into our CRM apps and available to the customer uh, as a single unified experience. So this, um, not just the CRM apps alone, but the platform is what allowed uh, Salesforce to become number one in the CRM market. So what we're finding now is that a lot of our customers and partners uh, are at the same point with their applications that we were with our CRM ap applications when we first opened up the platform. And they're saying that um, you know we've got these we've got the tools to build some great apps and we've got some great apps in the app exchange, but apps aren't enough for us anymore. We need to be able to offer a platform to our customers and put the same power behind our applications that you've put behind your own uh, CRM apps. So the custom platform is our response to that. It will allow uh, ISVs to build their own platform on top of Force.com and build their own ISV ecosystem on their platform offer platform features to their customers that uh, might not be available natively in the force.com platform, uh, and do the same thing to their apps that we've done to our CRM apps. Likewise, it also provides a uh, internal platform for enterprise IT departments to build uh, reusable components and platform features for their app development teams to uh, speed the development of their apps and so that they can um, build off of these reusable components instead of having to uh, repeat a lot of their development tasks. So I'm about to turn it over to Mac, but before I do that, I'd like to get a little help from you guys. Uh, he's gonna demonstrate a Twitter integration, and so if uh, you guys could pull out your smartphones and uh, tweet something about uh, hashtag custom platform. Uh, talk about how awesome the custom platform is, um, which at this point you have to take on faith until you see the demos. Um, <laughs> And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Mac, the uh, CTO of Fontiva. Thank you. Custom platform gonna disrupt Salesforce One platform, yo. That's my favorite one. <laughs> Please don't embarrass me later when we do this. So, like, I wanna see a lot, of, uh, a lot of tweets. That's really gonna help drive the demo later on, so let's make sure we do that. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mac Anderson. I'm Fontiva's CTO. Fontiva, started as uh, really just building apps for nonprofits. And uh, we have such a, a complex application uh, stack that we ended up making our framework uh, really selfishly to power our applications. And, and, and Aaron's team has built and is building right now something that's gonna change our business for forever. Forbes says the future of any enterprise software vendors being decided in their developer community developers, and I'm one, I write a lot of code, we're a little egotistical, and this doesn't help, but it's true, we're powerful. Nerds are powerful, especially in this city, especially in this community, and especially when it comes to making purchasing decisions. It is the future of all of our, uh, I really truly believe this to be true for Fontiva, and developers do not like closed systems. We want everything to be open, everything to be easily accessible, everything to work and have uh, some transparency, especially when we have trust. Because it's hard to trust someone else's app, but if you have an, or, uh, an open API and you are transparent about what you're, what you're actually producing and publishing, 
This can change your business too, and custom platforms can help. In the beginning, who knows? Maybe somebody on a punch card somewhere down the, down the line is, is where software was born, right? And then something came along and it, it replaced that, and Oracle came around and made a really interesting relational database. Java married Oracle, and dare I say, Salesforce was born. Force.com. So this is what Force.com looks like today. Java and Oracle now are powering things like Apex, which is the programming language, as you all are undoubtedly very aware of. And then we feel like we fit somewhere right on top, the Fontiva framework. So everything and every time that we go up the stack, we do a few things. We reduce the cost that it takes for our customers to adopt and implement our applications, because the nature of going vertical in the stack, things get easier to do, more declarative, more configurable, more dynamic. And customers reap the benefits, but also ISVs and partners reap benefits too, because there's a, a massive amount of opportunity uh, to be had when your app is really easy to implement, and extending and building custom platforms will do that for you. For Fontiva, it's really important for us to build a custom platform, because we're going to find out, we're going to make a lot of additional revenue opportunities for our business. We're going to engage developers and build a community, because remember, they're the most powerful. And we're going to broaden our addressable market. And at the end of the day, our customers, again, like I said, reap the benefits. It's, it's better apps, faster, with less code. And now, less code is really important to tell this story, and platforms help complete it. And we'll show you a little bit later today in the demo of what we've actually done, and hopefully you'll enjoy that. It was very challenging to get to that point. It was challenging to build on Salesforce today, because at the end of the day, what do we have to work with? We have custom objects. We have custom settings. They store data. Does it make sense for your application's logic to be driven in a very similar storage model that what you would find on an account or contact or opportunity? Like, does that really make sense to us? And that's what we've been doing for a long time, right? Developers want to push the limit, push the envelope. And we're trying to figure out ways that we can get and make Salesforce and the Force.com platform something that it just really isn't today and that they're working hard to do, especially with Aaron's uh, and Avram's efforts here in Custom Platform, which is the ability to actually have access to that layer that we don't have access to today. The same thing that drives Salesforce's page layouts, the same thing that drives custom objects and fields, the same thing that drives all of your classes and components and packaging and deployment, we're now going to have access to. And it was challenging because we were trying to make it something that it's not. And now we have access to it. At the end of the day, data is not metadata. Metadata is what we needed access to, and now we have it. It was actually so easy in our effort to prepare for this demo. We were able to refactor a lot of work. In fact, 19 months it took for us to build our framework and all the technologies and concepts we built inside of it. It's very, very robust. It's very complete, but it was very difficult to build. And to get just all of this on custom metadata types, it was so easy. It just took us two and a half weeks. For the effort that it takes to create a custom object in Salesforce, which we all know is very easy, we can create now a custom metadata type. In fact, uh, we had to have a native, uh, we have a native gate gateway and service for APIs, which is what we're going to use to power this Twitter demo, where we're going to do an integration to Twitter with no code. And to get all of that functioning, like I said, it was just, it was very simple. We have a couple of demos planned um, right now, and Avram's going to show you. Uh, a, a really awesome demo about reusable pick lists and their story of how custom platform was born from that. So without further ado, Avram. Thank you, Mac. Um, so I'm going to start out by showing you um, a demo. And I want to make it kind of clear that this is a demo of a sample, um, a sample platform feature and some sample stuff that's built on it. Um, we're not in our team releasing reusable pick lists right now. We are not, in fact, even claiming that this sample app is going to do a lot of what pick lists do. Basically, it just allows you to reuse pick lists for UI, um, from a UI perspective. Oh, and that's me. <laughs> so this is a story that's going to involve three different groups of people. I'm separating them out, even though uh, we think this will also be very useful for um, you know, the pure IT case that Aaron talked about, because I think it's easier to see how everything interacts if you actually have three people. They're represented up in that right-hand corner. You can see on the legend, um, we've got 
People in red are picklists are us, and they're actually making this simplified reusable picklist feature as part of their customized platform. Um, they're not releasing any particular reusable picklists, um, except a couple that they're using for testing. The actual reusable picklists are being used by one of their own ISVs, which they can now have. And the people in blue are their ISV. They're making a travel application. Um, and they're going to want some reusable picklists in the travel application. So they're making it an extension of picklists are us. And then the people in gold are the um, end customers. They're not actually, in this case, going to do any development. They're just going to install some packages and get to experience the joy. So the first thing that um, picklists are us has to do is it has to make a way to um, represent the picklists. And these are in these two objects over here on the left. Um, reusable picklist and picklist entry. And reusable picklist is basically going to store the header information, like whether a picklist is sorted or not, um, and what the name of the picklist is. And picklist entry is going to um, store details about each entry in that picklist. Um, these look a lot like custom objects, and they are a lot like custom objects, but as we'll see, they're not exactly custom objects because they're metadata types. So to give you an example of how this is used, people in travel apps are going to make some metadata of these types. They're going to make a couple of uh, reusable pick lists called planets and hotels that they're going to use in their application. And they have entries for these various pick lists. Um, as you can see, the entries are all associated with um, the relevant pick lists. So that is um, the Mercury entry is associated with the planet's pick list. And we have the Motel 6 entry as part of the Motel's pick list. Now, that's not quite all they need, because in addition to specifying these pick lists, which is great, you actually have to say where the pick lists are going to be used. And they've got a third metadata type that pick lists are us makes that's going to demonstrate, uh, that's going to link these to particular custom fields. Um, and to, give, to show you what I mean by that, let's say that Travel App makes a custom object. Now, the pick list for us people is, have never heard of greetings. That's, as far as they're concerned, it's a partner object. But they allow the people in blue to make these pick list usages. In particular, we're going to look at the top one there, Planets Visited PL. And it says that the Planets pick list is used on the greetings object, in particular on the planet visited field. And finally, when this all gets installed, Galactic Tours is going to be able to populate that planet visited field in their own org um, using UI that, that is generated for this pick list. So, Rather than show you a you know, three-organization ALM, ALM cycle, which is you know, pretty extensive, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some screenshots of how these things look in Eclipse, and then I'm going to move over to a live demo to show you how it looks in the customer org in the end. So the first thing here is these custom metadata types. Um, as you can see, they're in the objects folder in Eclipse, but they're a little bit different from regular objects, because that one, universal pick list item, has an, um, as you can see, has an MDT suffix, like the other types. That top one there, pick list test, is just a regular old custom object. And like a lot of custom objects, they can have custom fields on them. So this one has a pick list field. And for non-alphabetically sorted lists, you can specify a sort order field as well. That's a number. And um, you know, it will use that to determine relative ranking in order for the pick list. Now, how is this actually made to work? Well, Picklist Saras has developed a class um, that can basically take any S object type, go through its fields, and figure out if there are pick lists that it needs to display um, from all of that, from all of the custom metadata in their customer partner orgs. And they use that as a controller for a page, which is going to do the actual rendering here. So now let's leave them behind. 
and move to their partner, Travel App. This is um, Travel App's package with all the stuff closed up. And I'm wondering if anybody here notices some things that are missing from there that you might think you would need to develop you know, customized UI functionality, but which they actually do not need in this case. Sorry, yep, there are no classes. There are no pages. There's actually nothing but declarative stuff here. And we're going to look in particular at some of the declarative custom metadata. The name of custom metadata, it starts with the name of the type. And since they've installed the Picklist RS package, it's a namespace type, universal Picklist item. But then the latter part of it is the name of a particular record. And I want to make it clear this is a big difference from custom objects because you cannot develop records of custom objects in Eclipse. Um, you cannot deploy them. You cannot package them. These you can develop in Eclipse. You can deploy them. And you can package them. And in fact, it's specifying particular values for the custom fields. It's saying, oh, yes, this is a planet's entry. And in fact, it's going to be order three in the planet's pick list, which is not alphabetically sorted. The other one is. And I'm going to show you what that looks like um, in a custom customer organization. I'm going to get out of here briefly and go down here. And my demo is in Firefox. And let's up that. And that's probably not even remotely readable. So I'm going to up the size a little bit. Can people read that now? OK, good. So here we have um, the creation page for one of their objects. Um, I've made it kind of the home page of the app, which is why the interplanetary greetings tab isn't actually lit up here. Um, and the main thing that's interesting about this page is that it has that field, a field on it, planet visited. And planet visited is populated from the metadata that Travel App made. If we move over to another object that Travel App made over here, Interplanetary Bookings, let's create a new one. Sorry, this is pretty basic UI. They've got one drop down here that's populated by the other pick list, Hotels. But they also, if you go over to the destination, they're actually reusing that pick list. And this is all Travel App code. It's all installed in their organization. Um, they, don't, they haven't done anything themselves to create these pick lists, let alone use them on different sorts of objects. And now I'm going to pass over to Mac, who's going to show us something that is more than just a little sample app. It is really cool. And <coughs> let me go back to here Thank and you. start it up. And move it forward. Cool. Thank you. At this, yeah, definitely a round of applause. Avram is the inventor, by the way. He's probably a little too modest to say, but he, he's an inventor. Um, he really is. And he built uh, this feature as a concept and was really, is do all the credit for the benefits we're sure to reap from it. So thanks again. Well, I don't know about all the credit. I have, I have a lot of help. Well, at least starting it, man. Just take it. You're on stage. You should take credit. You're on stage. It's fine. Um, all right, of rock. Fontiva, uh, Fontiva framework demo. So you know, with this pick list demo that we had before, if you can imagine, we've just created some custom metadata types of our own. And instead of using them to power pick list, we're using them to power integration. We've built uh, an API services uh, tool that's 100% no code. Um, there's some options to write code for custom authentication, things like that. But the demo today is done with no code. And we achieve this with just essentially what it would take the effort to create five custom objects. But we wrote a ton of code, of course, to power these no code integrations. But with five custom objects, or now custom metadata types, a very simple where you have an API service at the top, uh, and then those services obviously have connections because we need to have different people in our Salesforce org authenticate through these services. So if you can imagine Twitter, 
if you wanted everyone to log in with their own Twitter account into Salesforce and integrate in that fashion, that's what a service connection is. A service connection config for us allows throttling so we can monitor usage of these APIs and callouts. Framework at the end of the day is a lot like Java Spring in the sense that it's an inversion of control container, just a lightweight container. Um, we have a single point of entry so that we can monitor these types of things. API resource is a one-to-one -one mapping between things like tweets and a custom object you're going to see called Twitter tweet. And then the mappings are the fields that live underneath of those resources. So we have a resource to custom object, a mapping to custom field. And we're going to show you five minutes or less is kind of a, if I take six minutes, don't think I did a bad job. So I will now get out of here and give you a little bit of a tour to give you more context. The first thing I want to show you, and I'll get this bigger here, are my custom objects here. So this Twitter search and Twitter tweet objects are just standard custom objects as anyone else would create them, right? I think we learned that probably day one of Salesforce training right after logging in is how to create a custom object. We just have, uh, at the highest level, just a, a search field that we're going to use called hashtag, and that's what we're going to use to drive the demo, which I hope everyone has hashtag something completely ridiculous related to custom platforms so that you can be featured. And then we have underneath of Twitter searches, Twitter tweets. And that custom object is also simple. It's a master detail linked, so it's a child of those uh, Twitter search objects, and those fields are simple. We, had, we have a profile image which actually just stores that URL, so if you're embarrassed about your profile image on Twitter, too late. Uh, it'll be previewed. We have a tweet here, long text area, tweet date, tweet ID, tweet Twitter handle, and Twitter, uh, the actual link to the Twitter search, that master detail it referenced. So um, if we take a look at framework itself, just to show you uh, this, what it actually looks like. So this is a GUI for something that's 100% native Apex API for what we actually have. Um, on this dashboard screen, we're going to focus on these API services. So for the demo, we're just going to drill right into API services, although we do do a lot of things. Uh, inside of API services, you can see I've already connected to Twitter. Uh, and I want to give you an overview of kind of how we're powering this, because it's actually, I think, really fascinating and interesting. Uh, that green checkbox, it took me six hours to make, because we're terrible with UI, right, developers? But when we get it right, we get it right. I really like that green checkbox, a nice status indicator. That was, that was literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, <laughs> the API service key here is how we can invoke and describe the API like if we wanted to get a new instance of this API service. The registered app is a concept unique to framework where you register these apps. We have an exception logging system application performance analytics and usage and consumption, they're all registered to apps at the end of the day. The endpoint here for the API twitter.com, uh, there's no uh, custom authentication class we're using, but you can write a custom class. We're using the standard framework one. Uh, Twitter's on OAuth 1A, not 2.0, and we support that as well. Demo API service built on Fontiva's framework, that's a description I'm reading to myself. Uh, API service connection here, all this really is at the end of the day is uh, making sure that we can, we have the ability to define whether you can connect to the API service for all the users in the org or just users like we said earlier, and this just stores those connection configurations. Um, if I drill into one, I actually will see all the different parameters of the connection configs. You can see that the call outs last 24 hours, request token URL, call outs lifetime, all of these are configurations driven by these custom metadata types, and these are new custom entries in those metadata types. So the really nice thing about this is, is we can be very abstract, but very clean, and we can deploy natively these integrations. So think about that for a second. Old Salesforce, let's take a step back. Old Salesforce, to do this, sure, you could probably do it. You could probably do it. You would use a custom setting likely because they're cached and they're, you know, we're exempt from government limits on those, but how are you going to leverage this great technology if we can't deploy or we can't track through source code management, right? So the power of this is really driven by these metadata types. They allow us to be very abstract, very simple, and give developers something that developers require for trust, which is simply access and transparency. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and log into the service 
Okay, so uh, I just clicked the login button. I just had to configure those endpoints and URLs. And I'm just going to go ahead and hopefully remember my password to Twitter. MaxCloud, at MaxCloud, by the way, follow me. I have no followers. <laughs> like, literally, none. I think the last time I actually tweeted was about uh, thanking people for giving me these really great free icons that I used, actually for that green checkbox. Pay with tweet. So the resource we created, remember those objects, was that we have that Twitter tweet target object. The name of this resource we're calling is hashtags. It maps to the Twitter JSON object called statuses. It's the root. You have an a API object key, a, a target object key. We're going to drill into it and look at those mappings. We, we need to map the fields and those values back to those custom objects. So you can see these mappings. We have statuses, uh, user profile image URL, HTTPS, so that we can get the image previewing securely. I, we did think about that. Uh, we have the created ad, of course, the user screen name, the text for the tweet, all mapped accordingly. Does everyone kind of get it now? You have this API object, and you take them, and you say, hey, I want you to put these in these custom fields we created. And you have round trip, serial, you know, round trip communication between Salesforce and, and any vendor um, through these configurations and these these entries of these custom metadata type. These variables uh, allow us to pass custom URI parameters. So for the search, we need to pass a queue variable. That queue stores the value of our query. Um, so it's pretty simple. And you can uh, specify a default value if you wanted to. Uh, count is just the limiter. So we, only, we don't want to get a million tweets. So hope we set out 100. We're thinking I'd be lucky to get like three. I'm hopeful that everyone has gotten the point to hashtag custom platform. We'll take it back to the Twitter here, and we'll take a look at one last thing, is the object itself. So let me just click go and kind of give you the idea. Uh, we have some hashtags here for Fontiva, and then some tweets that got returned. I'm going to do a new Twitter search by the hashtag custom platform. There's your queue to show up if you want to be famous. Maybe not famous. But who wants to be famous? I'm going to click Get Tweets. It's going to invoke this API. There you go. All right. Let's see how many we have. Developers love open systems, truth, custom platforms, DF14. Who's that? I want to. That's actually a really. There you go. <laughs> Aaron Fay. Congratulations, you're famous. <laughs> So proud to see my Scrum team presenting custom platform. Oh, that's, we know them. Oh, there we have, we have an egg. Maybe, maybe they had an embarrassing one before and they just swapped it out really quickly after I said that. Ready for custom platform to make donor nation an even better foundation for my SFDC. That's a customer of ours. Thank you, customer. Custom platform is awesome. I don't see any custom platform yo's. That's okay. Let's see if we can find, oh, that's a good picture. Eric Fortenberry, you are famous. Thank you very much. Custom platform demo and a, and, a, and a link to something. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this demo. I hope this is going to change. And when you leave here, I hope you, your creativity will spark and we can be innovative. It's time now we can take this with these new features. We can do some really awesome things. For the first time, we have access to utilities we've never had access to before. We can deploy them to our customers. We can manage them through source control. And I think what we built is pretty cool. I think it's actually really cool. No code API integrations. That's awesome. The challenge is, what can we do as a community? What's the coolest thing that we're going to build now that we've seen this? And without further ado, I'll let Aaron take us home. Thank you right. very much for your time. Thank you, Matt. That was awesome. Thank you, Mac, uh, for that great demo. Thank you, Avram. Uh, so you saw two very, very different demos here. And I uh, just want to reiterate how Avram uh, introduced this. The custom platform is not about creating reusable pick lists. It's not about creating uh, an API framework. Uh, it's a platform that allows you to uh, just really opens up the space for you to do a lot more than you've been able to do so far with your applications. 
Uh, just, just as there is a broad diversity of applications in the App Exchange, uh, Custom Platform is going to be able to uh, greatly magnify the diversity of things you can do. So just as Max said, you know, really think creatively about how you can empower your applications once you have the ability to, to uh, bundle a platform with it. How can you make them more extensible? How can you make them more flexible? How can you make them more powerful for your customers? Uh, so this is where we are and where we're planning to go with the custom platform. Um, the ability to create custom metadata types uh, is available now in a uh, developer preview. And if you want to take a look at that, um, uh, please get in touch with me. You can talk to me after this uh, session or uh, reach out to me in our community group, which I'll point you to in a moment. Um, we're going to get that to beta in the spring release and uh, knock on wood, safe harbor, uh, GA in the summer. Uh, and then the, uh, the first uh, post-GA major enhancement we'll make to that is the ability to create um, metadata relationships, to create relationships from uh, metadata to other stuff in your application, whether that's other custom metadata or uh, custom objects, standard objects, um, uh, fields, that kind of thing. So you saw in Avram's uh, demo, he had uh, uh, relationships from pick list values to uh, pick lists, for example. Currently, uh, that would be done with a, uh, stri with a string, an API name in a, in a uh, text field, um, and ha having the ability to create a validated relationship will be the, uh, the first uh, major enhancement we do after we give the, um, make the ability to create custom metadata types generally available. So this is our community group. Uh, please find us on the uh, uh, success.salesforce.com site and look for custom platform. Uh, reach out to any of us there or anybody else in the community. Uh, and with that, we'll open it up to questions and answers uh, from all of you for anybody up here. Actually, I forgot one last thing. If you wanted, uh, we made available all the code in that app you saw in the Twitter demo on Fontiva.io. So if you go there, you can install the package and start working with it, and hopefully it will inspire you. I just wanted to throw that in there, because we do have that up running right now. All right, do we have any questions, comments, feedback? Hi, I was going to ask, there's features that we can work with standard metadata like translation workbench, change sets. Is that all going to be available with custom metadata types? Yeah. yeah. So I can speak to that. The answer is um, not yet, but it is very much on our roadmap. And um, yeah, it, it, it will be. Um, the idea is that these things should be full metadata objects, translatable, et cetera. Um, so it's um, because these are basically objects, you know, at, at the kind of object level, you should be able to use them equally well from, from mm -hmm. um, any particular aspect of our platform. So yeah, it's not, I mean, the, the demo I did was not, you know, kind of really developed on Salesforce One, but certainly it could have been. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the mobile app? Yeah. The mobile app, yeah. So I, I can, yeah, it works. It does. We, we, we've actually built some features on it. Could you load uh, metadata objects from different vendors, let's say, into one, um, into one org, or do you actually need to subscribe to let's say your custom platform org? Um, yeah, no, you can actually um, install both different types from different orgs because the types are namespaced. The metadata is actually namespaced too. So you can install different metadata of the same type from multiple orgs. Um, and the records themselves will get, will get namespaces. So you won't have to worry about name conflicts. And they're treated as managed, et cetera, so you don't have to worry about um, upgrades and that kind of thing. Hi. I'm actually seeing the possibility of this maybe being able to be used for like compound fields, uh, such as like phones or addresses or that sort of thing. Yeah. Is that true? And if so, that could be our solution to the whole problem with the 20-character state problem. The 20, the 20 character state problem? Oh, yeah. oh you mean to have the, like some join field or group field? Concept? Yeah, in other words, just having like maybe a compound field where we can have our own address type, we can have our own phone type, we can have even an email type where you define where it came from, 
those sorts of things. Yeah, what I, with what I showed you today, you know, what, with what we're talking about today, you can, you can definitely hack that up. We actually, in some of the longer term, are hoping to make it a really smooth process. You can actually just define when you're, def you know, something as a field type and say these are the columns on the field type and these are how it relates to custom metadata. You know, here's the, the kind of metadata about that field type. Right, thanks. The pick list values are coming from metadata, actually. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I see. Could you make a mashup? Um, you could write it, for example, to read pick list values optionally from either custom metadata or an object. I mean, the, the, you know, the developer of the platform would have to, to build that right. in. But no, I mean, right, it, the, the platform developer just wrote that Visual Force page. I mean, they could, they could have written it to also consult anything else that they had wanted. What, what's important to know is that, to your question, which is a great idea, actually, I think that would work perfectly. The point here is that the, you have the control. So you're going to be the one surfacing those abstractions and those, those mechanisms to achieve that result, right? The custom metadata type powers it, but it's more of a, it's more of a reference or configuration, right? So I mean, I think that that's a great idea. You could totally do that. So, quick question. Once I sh um, a great presentation by the way, excellent demo. Yeah. Uh, once we create a new metadata type, can we limit which of our, uh, our customers have access to it? Uh, is it access, and how do we share it basically to all the customers? Against a subset of customers have access to it, so they can further use it in their instance? Right. Question. So yeah, it's a very good question. We haven't quite figured out yet um, exactly how we're going to make perms work, but we will. We certainly do want, for example, both the type and individual records of that type to be protectable. So you know how, like when you have a protected custom setting, I mean, that's always at the type level. Um, you know, people can't actually see it. It's just your own namespaced code. Um, we'd like both for... Um, the pick lists are us to decide that they only want to release their own pick lists. They don't, you know, they don't want people building additional pick lists so they could make their type um, protected. Or for travel app to be able to say, I want you know, our entries to be protected so that only we get to see them. Right. Any other questions? Okay, great. Well, thank you, Mac. Thank you, Avram, and thank you to all of you for spending your lunch with us. I really appreciate it.